Everyone, excuse me. Hello. We're going to start, so you give us some peace. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Wareham Board of, uh, Board of Appeals for tonight, uh, March 11, 2020. It is 6.30 p.m., and we are at room 320 at the Multiservice Center. I want to make a call the meeting to order, make a roll call to my far right, uh, Veronica Devenese, our clerk, Jim Makabachi, my far left, is Jake Morrison, our town planner, Ken Buckland, myself, the chair, Nazi al also present, professional engineer, uh, consultant for the town, Mr. Charles Rowley. Uh, before we start, do we have any minutes? Yeah, yep. we do. Uh, minutes were prepared this afternoon. I've had an opportunity to review the minutes before the meeting, find them to be accurate. I'm um, happy to make a motion to approve them as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose. Abstain. Okay, be before we go forward, for, for those who is new at this process, this is a five board member. Uh, however, we, we short one member. Next time we meet on the 25th, we'll have, hopefully, we'll have a fifth member. Uh, you have the right to be heard with five members. So the way it works, if, if you choose to go with four members, you have to get four out of four. If there's five board members, you have to get four votes out of five. Uh, what we do tonight, we have to open the, the public hearing and we'll continue it if you choose to continue, with, uh, or you could go with the four. So with your consent, we'll, post, uh, we'll continue it until the 25th. So for, who, that, who, for whoever don't want to I mean, tonight that affects that lucky goat. Okay. Do, oh, we, there's no new the public ones, hearing. The other ones are not uh, do not require a four member vote. Why? Because they're minor modifications. Like, uh, which, which one is this? Oh, the continued. All right. We, we, so we'll get to this after. The, so the, this has been opened. So we'll get to that. And in, uh, there's no new public hearing, so uh, so I guess anyone here for new public hearing? I don't I don't assume there is. It's not in the agenda. No, right? there's no new public hearings. The next April 8th, you'll have a lot of public hearings. And hopefully, okay. we have a full board complement at that point. All right. So with that being said, so we're gonna move to 13-19, Noria, former Maxi Gas. Request for site plan approval, uh, approval minor modification map 108, 2416 Cranberry Highway, LLC. All right. So uh, just your name for the records. Uh, I, I believe that th this hearing has been approved, so you just come in for modification. We need your name and address for the yes, record. Um, good evening. My name is Tom Healy. I'm with Noria Energy, and we're located at 326 Clark Street in Worcester, Massachusetts. And I'm uh, Jim Bernardino with Bowler Engineering, 352 Turnpike Road, Southboro, Massachusetts. Okay. Did you do the original plan? Uh, no, we did not. Uh, my colleague, Jesse Johnson, uh, did the original uh, permitting uh, through your board. Um, I took over the project with Norea. We're the same company. I just, Norea is one of our, uh, my clients that I've worked with closely in the past. So uh, maintaining that relationship, kind of moving the project forward with that. Um, with that, I you want to give a quick overview of who you are, and I can dive into the plan sure. changes. Sure. Yeah, Nuri Energy. We're based out of Worcester. We operate uh, roughly 125 gas stations throughout New England. Um, the reason we're here tonight is because we had um, we had purchased five locations in Southeast Mass from New England Farms. Um, one of them actually is, is operating under our name it, it, on Cranberry Highway right now, the mobile station. So um, with that, um, we also went into an agreement on this property, this maxi gas property, which was previously permitted through uh, New England Farms. Um, and um, we're, we're gonna be the, the tenant there leasing that location. So we just uh, took the plan that was approved and made some minor modifications to it so that it aligns more with what our typical proto prototype is for a gas station. So uh, Jim will explain the changes. We've got a couple of plans to show and with an overlay so you can see the, the changes for what we're proposing versus what was originally approved. You, you don't outside changes? 
the parking lot and stuff? Yes, there are yeah. some changes, and Jim, Jim will detail that. Okay, go ahead. Bef <laughs> before I go forward, have you forward this, uh, this changes to the town engineer? Have you discussed with Mr. Rowley at all? Uh, no, we have not discussed that um, with the town engineer at this point. Um, we do believe that they're very minor in nature, and we'll go over those this evening. Uh, we did, however, forward those, uh, the plan to the fire department to ensure that there is adequate um, emergency vehicle circulations around the property. Uh, today, he responded back, I think. Um, we have a letter. Yeah, you have a letter? Okay, I'm no longer. I don't think he had any issues with the, the proposed layout. So um, what's on the board in front of you is what was previously approved. Um, basically, um, to uh, address some of uh, Nuria's uh, program and how they operate their uh, facilities, uh, some minor modifications to the uh, plan have been made. One notable is the building footprint. Um, the side by side, the lower levels as approved, up above is the uh, proposed. Uh, what was approved previously was 5,300, just over 5,300 square feet of a building footprint. Uh, the modification um, increased the building square footage to 5,600 square feet, just so that the internal operations and the way the store is laid out uh, fits with their overall program that they have in their stores. So that was an increase of 282 square feet. Uh, additionally, what was uh, another change that uh, occurred was we added uh, MPD, basically another fuel dispenser. What was approved was five, but however, we're proposing uh, six. Um, we did that within virtually the same canopy footprint as what was uh, previously approved. Before, they had very wide open lanes with a bypass between the two. With these single lane configurations, you really don't need that escape lane. There's no one behind you that finished pumping first and wanted to sneak through. So we're able to reduce the center to center width of the fuel dispensers and provide that six, um, what we call an MPD multi-product dispenser within the same footprint of the overall canopy. Um, we shifted the canopy approximately uh, I think about seven feet closer to the uh, Cranberry Highway to allow for some in enhanced circulation along the front of the building. Um, I've also provided um, a red line to the board, um, which kind of overlays the approved plan versus the um, what's currently being proposed. I do have did was for the parking configuration we actually shifted that further uh, it's actually south on Cranberry Highway um, to allow for the modified building footprint the, the building footprint actually got um, a little bit wider but narrower um, meaning deeper it got deeper but the width decreased so what we were able to do is we added a landscape area along the side here of the building. We proposed the relocation of the dumpster um, facility away from the main road, try to get it out of sight. We moved it around to the back at the end of the parking stalls. And we were proposing to um, introduce an outdoor patio area. We have some protective bollards, a little um, fenced area so that Customers can you know, get a nice coffee, sit outside in the sun when it's a nice out. Um, all in all, there was very minor adjustments to the overall footprint development. Um, you can see we added some pavement down in the, in the front where the pink is, but all the green is where we actually tightened it up and added, added some landscaping. So all in all, we were actually decreasing the impervious area that was on the site previously by about 650 square feet. Um, other site plan modifications that um, are going to be applied to this project we haven't done yet is just maybe shifting a catch basin a couple feet to accommodate a new curb line. So other than those uh, um, site plan modifications that I just went over real briefly, everything else in the site plan package is going to remain virtually unchanged other than shifting a catch basin here or there by a couple feet. 
Uh, one other item that was different as well, I'll show you, is Norea does have their own brand and elevation. So previously there was a very generic elevation that was um, provided with the proposal, and I think we gave you some uh, 11 by 17 color copies as well. Um, this um, brand is uh, consistent with their overall program that they've uh, been implementing on all of the other sites that are currently under the operation of Maria. Um, pretty basic block with some architectural elements uh, throughout. Um, we won't get in great detail um, with that. But we just wanted to bring it to the board's attention that that is a, a difference that you will see oh, that is being presented. Obviously, there was uh, preliminary elevations that were provided during the approval process, and the um, applicant would be looking to modify those. Um, other than that, those are the significant site plan changes. The overall footprint hasn't expanded much. Um, the increased building square footage did require an additional parking spot. However, we had another dispenser and the modification to the parking spot just to the north side, we were able to get an additional parking space as well. So we're compliant with the parking even though we increased the overall square footage by just over, you know, just shy of 300 square feet. With that, that's a real broad overview of our site plan changes and uh, we think they're minor in nature but obviously we want a, a consensus of the board on that as well. So do you want to say anything? Would you like to put a, make a comment? No, I think Jim described the changes pretty well. We like to you know, get, the, um, get the trash enclosure out of view. That's why we moved it over to the, to the back side of the parking uh, on, the, on the left side of the building. Um, and um, the, the, the changes, the addition of the fuel dispenser, that's our, that, that is our typical layout when we put in uh, uh, a row of fuel dispensers under a canopy. We, we have the standard spacing that we typically put in between the, uh, between the fuel islands. So it works well. It works at all of our other locations. That's why we, we tighten it up a little bit. And we, we like to have that additional dispenser just so at, at peak times, you know, for the morning rush hour, that nobody, you know, there, there are two more fueling positions available at that time. So it alleviates if anybody's waiting. Hey, I'll, 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 I'll put my input in this myself and then we pass it by the town engineer and the board member. Uh, I do understand that the dispenser is a, it's considered a parking space. However, uh, as it is when we started this project on that corner has a lot of impact on traffic. However, we did agree, we, we did like apparently the board, we did like uh, the Cape looking building and the way they are, the architecture plan they presented, the overall picture they worked with us. Uh, I personally, I know it's not the Cape here, but we're in this town, I don't know where you guys from Worcester, we like to see like Cape looking, just like the mobile down the street. I, I believe Noria just acquired that property, right? Yeah, correct. So we like, uh, personally, I like to see something like this. Uh, 200 square feet bigger, I don't mind, but I do like, that first proposal, the way the architecture was proposed versus this building, uh, it, it looks, I don't, I personally, I would not like to see this building there. I don't know how the board feel about it. About it. And just to let you know, uh, of, right now, of the subject, you need three out of four. Yeah, so you don't need all four members for modification. If we agree, it's a minor modification. So, Regarding the additional dispenser, this, like the pump, so you add in two cars. I know it's adding to parking, but it's adding a lot more traffic, I believe. I mean, as it is, we've, last time we pushed it with five. Uh, we'll, we'll hear from the board member, and I'm, I'm sure personally I would like to see the input of the town engineer for future uh, like discussion. But I would, I would like first to hear from the board, see if they would like to hear it as a minor modification or major modification. If the board wish to go with minor modification, uh, like I said, three out of four, and he doesn't have to advertise it and change the site plan. If the board feel it's, it's uh, ex not, not extreme, more than 
minor modification, then we have to go with a, a full public hearing again. So I'll just start with Veronica, what she thinks. Um, <clears throat> well, I want to start by saying I do also have a little bit of concern with increasing the number of pumps that are there. Um, and I'd like to compare it to some of the other stations that are around just for my own edification. Whether or not it's a minor modification, my question is actually to the chairman. So we can choose, as a minor modification, do we have the ability to choose the modifications that are made or are we accepting it as a whole? No, you don't have to accept everything. You say, I'll agree with this. And this, I agree, for instance, no dispenser increasing the square footage add in the parking lot. In that case, it's minor. So you could pick and choose. Yeah, then I would say minor modification. Okay, Jimmy? What's the other one on Cranberry Highway that you just acquired? Which one is it? The mobile unit? It's a mobile station. It's at 2501 Cranberry. Across from Mr. Chris. Morse Lumber. Oh, okay. New England Farms across from Morse Lumber. Yes. Okay, okay. That's my only question. Jay? Um, I don't have a problem with this at all. Um, I'd like to hear from Charlie. I don't think if the fire department, if they don't have a problem with how this is laid out, if they can get in and out efficiently without any issues, I don't have a problem with even the extra pump. If the fire department has a problem with it, then it's a problem. All right. I, I think if the board feels this way, well, let's decide on a minor modification first. Are you okay with minor yes. modification? Jim? Yep. All right. Uh, I disagree with minor modification, but I guess it carries a minor modification. You get three out of four. Going back to the subject, just to clarify, uh, the fire department looked, if, in my opinion, looked at it as a safety matter. He does, they don't look like how, they want to make sure the truck goes inside, mm -hmm. they could get out, hook up the hose. It's all what they care. They don't, they don't, they don't care for the traffic impact on a corner. This becomes a town engineer matter and planning and zoning. So that's why I want to refer this subject. The town engineer might say it's minimal. I'm okay with it. I'm not an engineer. So if he says, I give you his blessing and stuff, I'm okay with it. He gives his comment. If we feel it's, uh, it's okay, if it's not okay, we'll go by that. So I'm going to pass it to Charlie, see what he thinks. Uh, there are uh, evidently seven changes um, that have been proposed. Uh, I'd at least like the opportunity to, to look at the plan and compare it to the old one just to see what it is. Um, based on what I've heard, they don't seem to be significant, but nevertheless, I'd like the opportunity. I just can't say yes or no based on five minutes without having a s chance to study it. Did you get a chance? Did you get a copy of this? No. no it's, yes. I've, got the, I've got the large set, Oh. which okay. I can read much better than that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So... So you, you wish to continue or you want to take I'd like I'd like time enough to continue. I could report back to you at your, your next meeting. Certainly, it won't take me longer than that, but I just okay. don't want to do it in five minutes. Right. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, hearing Charlie, wh what do you like to see change? Myself? So, yeah, these gentlemen can go fix it so they come back for once. Um. Well, based on some of the comments that you made, um, I don't remember what the exterior looked like on the original plan right set. It's, it's don't have it. Is it in here? Go back, go back, there. go back. And now go to the second page. There you go. Oh, here we that's go. The but there's no front elevation, right? Oh, yes, there is. Um, personally, I do like this building, the first one, better. However, that being said, I do think that the building that you have proposed does match some of what is already across the street uh, for like AutoZone and, and those buildings that have gone in recently. Um, other than that, I am glad that we're gonna have this continued because I, like I said, I do wanna be able to look at some other gas stations and traffic flow is a concern with the added pump. Jimmy. I've always said if somebody wants to wear pink socks, it's okay with me. It's their choice. I hate to tell people what color hat to wear. So I know the town. I know a lot of people want to see the Cape Cod look. To me, that's, you know, that's too much socialistic or communistic or too much. So I don't care what the design is. 
it's that's a business decision in my opinion if it would help the board i i have a photograph here of um an actual building with that design that we constructed up in uh, lewiston maine in the past couple of years yeah, if you'd like to pass it i know these companies so Right. Anything about the size of like the extra 200 square feet? The got, dispenser. I've seen them I'm and fine with that. Dispenser, the, the parking lot shifting. I mean, the look of it, too, honestly, it's kind of tucked back, so it's not going to be right out to the front. Yeah. So I don't think it'll be a huge. I do, be, I, I do understand what yeah. the Veronica said about the looks, looks like across the street, but my, it's a freestanding building. I would like to see the Cape Cod, but look. Yeah. But, that's perfectly fine. Okay. If, I know well, there's a lot of people in town that feel the same way you do to yeah. do Nazi. So, so eh? is anyone in the public want to have an input in this matter? I hear none. Like in favor or against? I hear none. So you guys are willing to come back on the 20th? Charlie, you have enough on the 25th? Yeah. Yes? Um, um, if I just may, uh, we, I, we don't have uh, any issue coming back on the 25th, but um, I just, you know, a minor modification is something that I've always interpreted as we agree it's a minor modification that we could work out some of the technical details with staff as well as their consulting engineers. Um, if that's something that's possible, you know, we would ask you to consider that. But if you do want us to come back and you know give the results of our communications by all means we're open to that um but i just want to ask that question of the board right. and see what I, like i said i don't make the call by myself if the board right. you get three out of four i guess you can so would you, would you uh, i don't know well, if you I want to do that or you just want to come back is it the 25th of right but if the board two agree, weeks if okay. you get three out of four of us for you yeah. to make a decision tonight it is what it is so how do you feel about it? You feel to give them okay pending for them discussing with Charlie or coming back on the 25th? I really, I'd like to see you come back because it will give me a chance to do the homework that I was talking about. Um, I'm so neutral. I, I feel as though we owe Charlie the time to look. Right. So okay. we've already got a member uh, that wants uh, to could come we back. Vote, could we vote tonight? Pending that everything, if when Charlie looks at it, if he agrees. That's what they ask. Yeah, I would yeah. do that. I wouldn't vote tonight. Right, but if uh, if two people said no, it dies. Well, and that's so, so if we vote tonight, then Charlie looks at it and wants to make some modifications, and we can do that. But I'm, 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 come back, right? I'm not okay with that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Because right. this, yeah, it, it needs we don't fine. know what that's going to be at this point, and you've suggested it's minor modification. Um, it still has to do with the special permit. It's going to right. require adjustment of the of the document and so forth. I would appreciate if we at least, let's get it all on the table at the next meeting. I, uh, like, I, I feel this way, and yeah. at least uh, Veronica feels nope, this way. That's it's fine. Not, so I guess most likely. Yeah, best, best to come back, I think. Understand. I have no problem working in the meantime with the applicant's engineer. Yeah, that's yeah, not a problem. should exchange we, we, business We'll do work. that, and um, I was not involved with, um, with having the traffic study done, but I believe the comment from the traffic engineer was that Adding the additional fuel dispenser doesn't doesn't drive up the traffic generation when they they use their criteria for doing a traffic report. Uh, I'll get that confirmed. I know that's a concern of yours, but we again we typically we put that in not because we're expecting that it's going to oh they have a sixth fuel dispenser so you know that's going to generate think more it's business. It's going to cause people to drive down 495 because there's an extra fuel pump there. It's it's really because of at the peak times we might we like to make sure that we've got enough fueling spaces so that we don't have people queuing up and they can easily find a fueling position. That's that's the, the truth of it. But we'll um we'll get mm -hmm. that information back to you through a traffic engineer also. All right, very well. Uh, so can I have a motion to continue 13-19 to the 25th? No, no continue. Oh. Just, just set the date for our next meeting. Okay. It's not, it's next meeting on the 25th. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for much. coming in. <clears throat> Good luck on your um, venture. <clears throat> or your acquisition. Or... Charlie, have a good night. You too, Mickey. Take care. Uh, oh, have a good night. All right, 38-18, uh, Sunrays Development. Uh, yes, I am, yep. Sunrays like to get development, no, minor modification. Yeah, um, the, the EOR is not here at the moment. He was going to be here at 7 o'clock. He said he called in um, that he won't be here for another four or five minutes. Um, and, but, but he will speak up. Which one is this? Pardon me? 
which location is that 2382? Is this? Uh, That's the solar side. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's the solar side. Oh, behind the, the storage over there. Yes, that's the exactly so in the okay. industrial park there. From so you want to table it until then? Well, yeah, if you have, if I could yeah, just yeah, have no a problem. couple of minutes here. Yeah, no problem. All right, we go forward. Uh, we'll continue with the continued public hearing. 3-20 Lucky Goat Brewery, 379 Main Street. Public hearing still, still open. So we just name 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 an address for the record, and we'll we'll proceed. Lucky Go Brewing, three seventy nine Main Street, Wareham, Massachusetts, zero two five seven one. Your your name, please. Aaron Perry. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Caitlin Hurd. Kendall Peabody. And Bill Lockwood, Lockwood Architects. All right. So if you, uh, just let me. When we opened that hearing last time, did you had four members or five? Four. Four. Like we had, we the, the only four. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. yes. All right. So you want to proceed? Yes. Just let us know where we at now. Okay. Um, uh, we presented the project last at the last hearing, and um, we came away with a, a decision that they you had voted to grant the variance for the use. And you had asked us to get you additional information on uh, fire, water, and sewer, um, of which we have provided in the supplemental package that you're now getting passed out. Um, taking from the top down, we have modified our plan slightly to comport with the GAF plan. Uh, so the landscaping is the same, uh, the, we, the number of spaces, uh, we had a discrepancy previously between nine and eight. We have taken five, uh, five seats out of the tavern to be a 40 seat uh, tap room, uh, thus requiring only eight spaces. Um, we've synced up the uh, landscaping with the GAF plan and and reduce the size of the patio likewise. Uh, we've been to the fire department. Uh, we've applied for their review. I believe that they, they said they would contact you guys directly. Um, we've been to the water department. We have a letter from the water department dated today, as well as um, the last water usage um, for the building when it was a fish market a number of years ago. And lastly, we have met a um, series of times with the sewer, with Guy Cabanilla that's at the sewer department. Um, and we have a summary of the, the sewage um, com composition. And, and we have a scheduled a hearing with the um, sewer board on March 19th, uh, which uh, Guy thinks we will have no issues with. But so All right, let me. Our load is quite small. Okay, well, we, that we don't understand this, so we'd just like to hear, personally, like to hear from the sewer department. We got it. On the 19th, right? I'll be allowed to increase the flow. Okay. Oh, I guess we have it here. That just happened today. Oh, they just sent it today? They just sent that today. Yeah, I didn't have checked to my email. the same thing from the water <laughs> department here, too. All right, good. Let me, <coughs> let me ask you a quick question. I know last time we discussed the site plan uh, about that was a dealer, car dealer. Did, did you guys work it out with the planning board? There was, a, there was a subsequent plan, uh, um, which I, last time I, in my ignorance, was not aware of, um, th that uh, did not show the cars. Um, Do we have a copy of the subsequent plan? Do you have a copy of which? The, the one that does not show the cars. I mean, we have this. We have this that you gave us tonight. Yes. Shows the building, but it doesn't show any of the parking. This, this is the GAF. This is the landscape. Was our, our, I think our biggest concern was how they were going to separate and where we're going to park people the last time, the last meeting. Right. And all that good stuff. 
So these these are lucky goat packing spaces now. These are not. Okay. Just for the record, because people can't see what we're looking at, the parking for the lucky goat will be up against the building, and the parking for the auto sales business will be in front of the old gas station. I'm calling it. Was originally a gas station. But I don't Frank see Cody a revision date here with the, from the engineer. September 18th. Yeah, but, uh, what was the other plan? When was that dated? Uh, I have it here. Hold yeah, but it. Bear with me. How did you guys revise it from September since we just heard it last week? Because they. I mean, if it's signed on 919, I don't understand how it was revised. And we, we opened the public hearing a couple of weeks they hadn't, ago. They hadn't supplied us this. They supplied us the old, uh, the so plan this showing. Is, this is the other plan here. Um, so this is 718. That's a July plan. Let's see what that one. Let me, That's can we see the other side of this? Yeah, this is the one that we were presented. Right. This is from July, and this is one that from was, September. That was the one I had in my possession. I apologize if it was, it didn't, didn't know it was late. Okay, so, okay, so the, the, the one you submit and you're showing us now, so this is that the proposed parking lot for that building? That's already gone but through that, site plan review. It's already gone to site plan with the planning board and everything? That's correct. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, they uh, did not see the uh, Lucky Go Brewing, but they did see the... Uh, the, the parking lot layout that's, that's shown on the plan. Okay. If, How, yeah, go ahead. Nazi, the, the last time we were here, maybe I misunderstood what you had commented on regarding the vehicle sales permit allowed at that site, that there had to be a decision made uh, on what was going to happen there, not... Uh, so it was kind of like, it sounded to me like they had to choose, the landowner had to choose what they wanted to accept as a permit, that, an active permit, so that the sales of cars could not also be conducted at the same time at a later date. Correct. Okay, can Mr. Madden speak on this? Hopefully, sure. Miss, can you speak on this? Do you retain on it or no? Well, I'm happy to speak on behalf of Gateway Motors. If, if the, own, the landlord want to come forward, if you don't mind? Just because we little, conf I, I'm confused anyway. <laughs> What's this plan is for and how did it come about or how, how you guys, have a seat, just a name for the record, if you don't mind. Well, I haven't had the opportunity to see the plans other than the ones that we presented to the planning board previously. Um, this one on 919? Um, you signed them on 919. Sure. That's the one. That's one of, that's, that's plan five of six. There's a complete plan set that we submitted. This is the landscaping plan that represents the landscaping that we propose for the used car dealership. On the adjacent you want, uh, if you don't mind, he wants to hear this. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Let me ask you a quick question, Bill. These plans, the, the thing we want to know, I know a car dealership has been approved. Where is the office for the car dealership? You were at this the, meeting. The office building right for the now, car dealership. Where is it? The approved location for the car dealership is on the adjacent building. Okay. So it has nothing to do with the. It, it's not the old fish market. It's the building to the right of that as we're looking at it from the street. That's the, uh, that's the location that is the approved office and location of the car dealership. Okay, and the previous plan, there were two cars displayed on the seafood building. Where we, we, show, we showed cars displayed um, in the front of the, the fish market. I'll call it the fish, fish market, market building right. just for convenience. Yeah. We showed cars there, but that plan was superseded by the plan where the old garage was so we moved everything okay. to the uh, okay. to the opposite side of the site we have display areas inside the building and okay. like eight spaces out in the front of the building as well as a, a dedicated parking lot for customers of the uh, of the dealership All right, so this is the plan we're going by so this supersede the other plan 
you saying? I would, I would, I would say yes, it does. It's got a later date on it. Okay. So, Veronica, what do you think? Yeah. That makes it clear to me. I, I wasn't clear on what was happening with the car sales and the brewery. Um, I think we just wanted to be clear on the two distinct separate entities and they have their own space and exactly in the display area for the vehicles for sale while there's some on the site of the building say to the right there's maybe 10 in front and four or five inside the building there's also spaces behind the fish market that are to be um, used for display they were separate and distinct from the parking that we identified for the fish market building Okay, thank you. Jimmy. Sure. Yeah. It's as clear as beer to me. I'm all set. Jake. Uh, no questions. Uh, Ken, you want to say anything? I have input on that. You're going to dedicate those spaces to the uh, Lucky Goat, the ones on the, uh, shown on the plan? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. Along the building. Yeah, along, along the building to the side there. Did, uh, did we have a 53G for this? The day have to open a I don't recall. Do you? It's the first time I've seen anything. No, so they do not have a 53G. All right. We, we need to have the town engineer review it because it's a special permit. I, we granted you the variance so you could have a brewery, but we still have to go through a special permit process. So we just like to have the engineer quick look at it the town engineer see if any comment because we're not engineers so but uh, apparently the water is okay with it the sewer is okay with it. everyone's okay with it we just want to make sure the parking lot drafted properly so on unless if it was a, I, I don't I don't know it, maybe somebody could correct me because it was a fish market and a restaurant can we ask is it pretty much the same use or can we ask for no, it was an abandoned use. Uh, the, it's been vacant for more than two years. But it is allowed use. Oh, no, it's the, not. The, no, it's the not. brewery is not an allowed use. That's why you granted the use variance. Right. Was, um, was that property, uh, so the fish market building, was that always owned by the same owner as the, the um, sorry, the surrounding? It, it was one so parcel of land with multiple buildings located on it. And if I just might add, with respect to the parking and what have you, the you know, it was approved for site plan review with the parking the way it's shown on on the current plan with the with the parking for the was for the car lot at the time against the side of against the side of the building. Um, you know, there was no addition of impervious area. There was drainage at the rear of the lot. Um, you know, and, and we did receive approval for the car lot at that location. Um, and then subsequent to that approval, it was decided by the the owners that they decide they, they prefer to move the building more to the I guess it would be considered the south so that's when we reapplied to the planning board went through site plan review modified the site plan to move the retail car sales class 2 license to that other site um, there, there were no site improvements proposed originally with the car dealership at the fish market. You know, we just really delineated parking spaces on the surface of the ground immediately adjacent to it, showed some parking spaces in the front of the building, two display spaces in the front of the building, and enhanced that space with, um, with landscaping that's shown on the plan that I just, that I just looked at. So, you know, I, you know, certainly it's up to the board to decide how to do things, but in my view, it, everything had been approved for the, for the same essential use of parking as is being proposed right now. So the parking was approved for the fish market as for like for the, the car dealership. The car dealership, eight no, spaces or so. Yeah. For a retail slash restaurant, maybe. That, that use but, wasn't even considered, as I remember it. No, it was not. There was, there was nothing to do with this building was ever considered by the planning board. It was all with respect to the adjacent building and the revision that they made to utilize that second building as the main display area and sales area with a strip along the side that's next to the CVS and the Dunkin' Donuts for a secondary display area for cars that people could go see. 
Um, I don't recall that there was ever any consideration with this building with respect to this use. No, there was not. Okay. At that time, at that time there was not. Right. So I think we're going to need some recommendation from the town engineer, but I don't want you to be disappointed. You are allowed to open a brewery. You get the variance. So you could do it, but you might have to do a little modification with the parking lot or whatever town. I, I don't think the building has to change, but we have to hear from the town engineer just so things that don't get confused on top of each other. Yeah. Um, so, well, well, hold on a second. Um, when we first came here a month ago, you told us what exactly you needed. You told us you need sewer, water, fire. At no point did you bring up an engineer needing to see the plan. I did and, mention about the, that the, uh, the dealership. I, don't, I know what I talked no. about. Yeah, the dealership I did tell you there was a dealership um, approved yeah, for understood. this plan. And there was card displayed, and you have to f figure out the issue. And I said, like I said, now Mr. Madden had explained that he moved the dealership to the side, which is I'm okay, perfectly fine with me. It doesn't affect my personal uh, decision. However, being uh, part of the approval of the planning board, the town planner saying that it wasn't, so it's Mr. Rowley. If the board wishes to grant it to you, it's, it's a different story. But personally, I'm, I'm not comfortable to plan some, uh, uh, grant something that town plan or say no one or the engineer. I don't know if the board agrees with me or not, but it, it, it's not. It's only a little bit of time, so uh, Mr. Rowley can review it, and he can sort out the, the the planning issue, the separating of the permit. We're not saying we do understand, like I said, that the dealers has been moved, but it's a I, I have a question. Yes. Um, to the applicant and to you, first to the applicant, how much time do you need in that building prepare, to prepare the building to be open to the public? We've probably got about three months or so. Three months? Yeah. Because okay. it's, it's pretty empty. <laughs> okay. And during that three months, and now I'm speaking to both you and yeah, Chair, I'm during that three months, do you think it's possible for the engineer to review the plan and you guys to agree on what the parking is going to ultimately be? I think that's fair. So is it possible for us to give these guys some kind of a signal that they can go forward and start spending money on that building. So they, I, I hate to see them sitting here waiting two or three more weeks to start construction. That, that's our biggest I end, yeah, I fear. Told, I have no problem. I <laughs> We're paying a lot of money for storage uh, right now. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just trying to make it clear. Uh, I wouldn't have voted. We appreciate that, Jim. I'm sorry. Let me finish. I wouldn't have voted yes for the variance if I'm not in agreement with you, Brewery. Yeah. But somehow we have to have some kind of order in town, some kind of plans, some, somehow as close as possible to the bylaw. We're not saying exactly by the bylaw, but somehow as close as possible and, and help you out and help the town, that's all. Yeah. We're not saying we don't want you, we'd love you to be there. And I'm glad the sewer said it's okay. I was worried about the sewer. I was too. <laughs> you know? So, Mr. Lockwood, what do you want to say? Yeah, well, I, we will hit, need to get a building permit, and currently the building permit is contingent upon right. the decision of this board. Uh, if the, this board could give some sort of um, word to the building department. That, oh, and me, we can me. do interior uh, renovations, uh, I think, um, you know, as long as they know that um, what we're doing. In the interior work, it can be done. However, I'm not saying if we deny you, if for some reason the board turned down the project, or you guys disagree with the conditions that the town want to put, you, you waste your money. But you could, uh, I don't think you. It, we understand it would be working at risk, yeah. What's that? We understand that it would be working at risk, yeah. Right. I mean, I don't see, I mean, can they pull a permit to main, fix, put the building partition and stuff? I don't see you. I don't think the building Wait, what, code provide you from improving what, 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 the building. What we're down to is the parking, if, if I if, if It's I site listen. plan, right. We don't care right. what they do inside. It's so, site plan. So the property seems big enough to me 
that somehow the landlord is going to yield yeah, space. It's plenty. They're well, going to get I'm, adequate I'm, I'm, parking. Yes, so I'm sure. I, I'm, I'm just inclined to say let's let them go out of here tonight thinking they can, or not thinking, knowing they can go get their permit, and at their own risk and peril, if Charlie says, hey, you know, you need to put a 14-story parking garage back there and it's going to cost you $27 million. And you guys say that makes the project financially unfeasible, you started at your own risk and peril. Now, he may only want 14 stories, not 27, but uh, you understand we can my probably point. Pull off I do understand I exaggerate point. sometimes, yeah. but my point is... We know Mr. Rowley to be a reasonable man. That, that, you know, you guys have got to iron out the parking with him. If he... Parking, he, landscape, he, and I all I shouldn't these say stuff. if he... When I'm not throwing the burden of, of everything on him, the board starts... <laughs> Sounds like it. But, well, <laughs> we, we, we want to depend on your opinion. Well, I'll, and, I'll be glad and, to and give you my opinion, opinion is, in a minute. Your opinion is going to, I know, opinions are, are like candy bars. Everybody has one. Um, but uh, um, you, you understand, I just soon see them go out of here tonight and go get their permit and get to work. I just think in the next three months, no matter what Charlie finds on the plan, they can come up with parking. Go ahead. Can I offer something on parking? You know, the zoning district is Wareham Village 1. There's a number of restaurants and facilities that are similar in nature to, to, this, to this operation that are in Wareham Village 1 zoning district that don't have the benefit of even providing six or eight or one parking space for that matter. Yep. You know, without going into detail about the, yep. the exact location of the spaces, you know, the Wareham, Village, the Wareham Village district in itself has a number of parking spaces right down next to the fire station, behind the gas station where the, where the water department office is. There's gotta be parking, there's parking for a train station there. It's public parking, Wareham Village 1 district. There's parking for the people that live in the apartments across the street. There's parking that people might use to go to Mama, Mama Mary's. Um, how about over there at the, uh, the, the parking space, the parking lot between Cafe American and the parking that's used in the back on Merchant's Way for uh, El Mariachi. So, I mean, the village district just by its nature provides parking for these types of uses. So I don't think there's anything specific in the zoning bylaw, and I didn't look at it, I come completely unprepared to discuss about parking, but I don't think there's anything in the, the bylaw that specifically requires us to place X amount of parking spaces, one per four seats, for, for each seat in those, in those areas, I mean, on that particular site. So I think that you know the board really should consider what the zoning bylaw really says and, and what it allows, and make a comp direct comparison on the, the type of uses that that are consistent with the village district. You know I think that the surface is paved; it exists. Um, it has a drainage area in the rear of the parking area. There is no need to provide any additional hard surface, handicap accessibility is provided, handicap parking spaces that meet the handicap code are provided at the front of this building. So, I mean, I think it's, you know, I think it's at least in- well, You make a good point. If there's no requirement for parking for the use, if, the, if, if our bylaw in fact doesn't call for parking, it's a, it's a valid point. I mean, I think it does. It's not so. specifically. It does call for parking. It does, does or one, does not? One per five, I believe. I'm yeah. sorry, Ken. One per, one per five seats. Yeah. They do have the parking, but not specifically the parking as a special permit. But the, the, the board parking, is okay the, with that. I'm okay with it. The parking in the bylaw is pretty specific. It allows the, any board great latitude in determining what the parking can be used. They don't want to provide excessive parking for certain areas, and certainly you don't want to provide a minimum amount of parking for certain types of uses in that parking bylaw. So there's great flexibility that can be uh, can be granted with respect to that. Like I said, you, in the plan you have plenty of parking. I'm not yeah, disagreeing no, with the parking. You have plenty. You only have uh, 12 seats. You only need three parking for the customers. Sure. You yeah, know, yeah. and you have plenty. And you have the handicap and employee. The, the quite thing I'm, I'm talking about is the as special permit as a whole. But again. If the place existed, the board is okay with it, and you guys want to iron it out with the town, with the 
Mr. Rowley, you can go. I don't the, have a problem. The, the standard on the special permit is not more substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. I do. I do. I do. So agree. I mean, can can we make a finding that it is not more substantially detrimental? It's to allow definitely not that more detrimental to the neighborhood. It's, but that's it's a an improvement. You guys would it's it's an improvement of the area. We all agree on that. That's why we granted the variance to begin with. I understand. So what do you like? What do you like to see? Well. The only thing with this parking, and for me, the parking and traffic flow and clear delineation of each area is foremost on my mind. And if that means that the planning board has to review it, I'm fine with that. I understand that it holds things up. If that is not the what we're discussing, board had already approved this so they, they approved that, then I'm, I'm kind of not sure what, what does the planning board have to approve that they haven't. They, I don't think it's, not, it's got nothing to do with the planning board, Veronica. I mean, it, oh, it was, okay. they so approved I, the car I lot. Something. Originally, yes. there was the plan they brought us before. It showed the cars displayed. So apparently, they gave us the wrong plans. So we, it was a part of, we thought that was a part of the car dealership. <clears> but they had re amended the plan, it, it looks like three months later, with the planning board and moved the dealership to the right. Okay. That's what they brought us tonight. But and, and the site plan that you have before you, the land, this landscaping plan, was part of the set that was approved by the planning board. The planning board looked at this with the idea that there was a no, different use within this building. They did not have a, a use variance, so they couldn't say that it was going to be a brewery. But the rest of it was a combination of uses on the site, with the, the principal use being the used car dealership. So I guess my question is, I, I think Maybe that's the point you're trying to make, Nazi, that there is a process to be followed? Is like, that? Apparently I don't they know. they did uh, the back so in September. So if they September. followed it. If you guys are okay with the, what they've given us, I, I'm okay with it. I, I, I think they what have happened, landscape and they have everything. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I think what happened is we got the, the, the wrong the plans wrong. originally, and it looked like the, the car dealership was attacked. You know, it was like one in... You we know, followed the, the wrong thing. map, and we ended up in the wrong place. And here, and here <laughs> we are. Here we are now. A few meetings later. Um, can we hear from Charlie on what he thinks about this think situation? It, but he, he can. Well, I'm just looking at the plan. First of all, I, I think we need to understand that there was a special permit site plan review that was done by the planning board. There was no consideration given to this use specifically at that time because at the time nobody knew what it was going to be. I'm looking at this plan, and the front of it says there are 34 patio seats, 45 uh, tap room seats. Are you looking seats. at the old plan, Charlie? Well, I'm looking at the plan that was given to me. Well, Can you do this? They just gave That's, us this tonight. They're giving you the wrong map and sending you the wrong state, too. Here, this is the plan. Get, get that one. Okay. This is the plan we're just going to tonight. All right, so we've got 40 tap room seats, and we've got 20 patio seats. That's a total of 60. So 60 divided by 12 uh, by oh. 5 is what? Okay. 12? 12. So you need 12 parking spaces, and they need to be oh. dedicated to this use. Where is that shown on that site plan? I'm, I'm just okay, curious. I, guess I don't I know. Counted, I counted the front. I'm sorry I didn't have my glasses. I didn't see the 40 <laughs> seats, yeah. So you get 60 seats. You got 60 seats, and at one parking space per every five seats. So that's 12. So I'm saying on the site plan that was approved by the planning board under the special permit, where are the 12 parking spaces dedicated or could be dedicated to this use? Out of oh. curiosity, where are El Mariachi's parking spaces? Right. <laughs> Let me, before we got, they have zero. Listen, I totally understand, <laughs> and we believe it's not detrimental. We, we don't have, in the, to be fair to everyone on Main Street, you don't have, personally, I don't think you should have all the parking lot, like, so we're not gonna penalize you to have ev by the book okay. where everyone else doesn't have it. Right. I do believe this, uh, and it's not more detrimental to the neighborhood to have just only parking lot. But if there's any other issues like stuff, what else you think? Well, there is an existing special permit for the site. And, it, By wasn't, the planning and, and it was not designated just to one side of it. The entire special permit is for that particular piece of property. So it seems to me that that special permit needs to be modified to allow this change. So there was never any separation between the buildings. It was, it was all by the same owner. 
So what you're telling us, they could go to planning board, they don't need us, they could get no, this. No, I, because I don't know what they asked for the variance for. Was it just the use? The use. The so you, you the grant use. a use variance, they take the use variance to go to the planning board then to a modification for the special permit they already have to allow that use. I don't see how you can do it any other way. And the, the uh, zoning requirement says for restaurant use, which is basically what this is, it says one parking space for every five seats. So that seems to me the criteria that you have to set. The only thing it says in the bylaw is that where there's no specific parking identified, it's up to the building inspector to make that determination. But it seems to me when you're putting seats here where people are going to drink beer and eat pretzels or whatever else. So it's a restaurant. I believe the zoning board still have the, the, the authority to decide on the, on the parking lot if the board wishes. Uh, I mean, if, some, if somebody wants to appeal it, they could appeal it or the planning board, I don't know. Well, one of the things you're, you're, you're not doing, not suggesting, is changing the site plan. What you're doing is, is asking, is determining whether or not the use is appropriate for the site plan as, as originally approved. So you can make that determination that the condition use variance, that <clears throat> the, the number of parking spaces shown on the, uh, on the plan are those that are dedicated to the use and, and are acceptable to the I don't have a problem with it to begin with. I just want, don't want that somebody appealing it for these gentlemen and the blows on their face. That's all. I want it done right. I don't want to issue a permit to it and then the planning board says, wait a minute, for instance, that was a dealership, but I, we know that, so that was sorted out. The, the planning board saw this plan and the only thing they didn't have was the use designated within the building. And you have done that by the use variance. Right. So at this point, are we making a determination that the plan that's there? We could accept it if we wish. Accepted if the for planning the use board that we're wants to appeal something, that's a, that becomes their, their thing. Can, that's we, not a, can we accept it with the eight spaces? If we, showing, yeah, if we, if we think it's not uh, not strongly that recommend that they somehow find use of four more spaces at a later date or during the next three The months. back of the building belongs to you too, no? In the back, or no? Um, yeah. Belongs to the landlord, yes. Right, I mean, it's part of the... Yeah, and I, so that I sounds that. like a reasonable uh, suggestion, Jim. Um, and I was just talking to Kendall that um, if facilitates the process going forward, uh, willing to remove the patio seating from the petition at this point um, until we come, for a minor come back for a minor modification parties. after we've uh, talked to the planning board or um, and done whatever else we need to do to uh, perfect the, the, the number and like, number and ratio I'd like to hear Charlie's comments but I'd also like to see you guys walk out of here tonight and go to the building inspector tomorrow and get a permit uh, I, I agree with both of those things yeah. So <laughs> if, if it's your <laughs> position that you're going to grant something other than what the bylaw requires, then there's nothing for me to look at because they're not making any changes to the site or giving the planning board an opportunity to look at it. So there's no reason for me to comment on anything. Well, that saves them some money in a 53G account. Well, whether it's according to the law or not may be another issue. Well, I guess if somebody appeals them, they lose it. If, yeah, but... But <laughs> you're, you're within your, your bounds if the number of seats meets the number of dedicated parking spaces in, on, shown on the plan. So what do you plan to tell us? So it conditioned the approval on the basis, of the use variance on the basis of, how many parking spaces do you have on the side there? Uh, eight. They got eight. eight. Eight designated. So, so 40 seats. For 40 seats. Yeah. So 40 seats until they come and show us more parking spaces as a modif modification to the... Um... Just draw some more parking in the back and come back and we'll let... And, and the board willing, I guess, uh, as I hear, they let one out, give you a permit to so walk away. So what do you away. think about a motion to grant um, with a restriction of only 40 seats? Without the patio. <coughs> until they come with more plans with more okay. parking. Then they go, they get working. And 
if by some miracle of miracles before the three months worth of construction is done, they've acquired four or five more spaces and they want to add more seats out on the patio, we can make a decision then. That works for you? That's fair. That's fine, yeah. We're good with that. And if you could work with the landlord to give you a little bit more parking in the back, I think uh, like that's what the board leaning towards. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you guys going to agree to do this landscaping plan as presented? Yep. Yeah, yep. That, that's what the, spot, that's what the uh, site plan uh, review has got. So I'm board. not sure who's going to be yeah, planting planning what, planning. but someone's going to plant it. I, I All right. Yeah. Is anyone in the audience want to speak in favor of this project? Against? In the audience? In favor? Uh, in favor, yes. Yeah, you want to come forward? Just, well, the, come just your name for the record. Uh, she wants to, to write it down. Joseph Sorrow. Yeah, here's the gentleman. Yeah, he, he has to hear it. Yes. Any microphone and say Joseph Sorrow, S A U R O. In favor or in opposed? Favor. In favor. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Okay, anyone else in favor? Against? We got another in favor. Couple of, come on up, state your yeah. name. Yeah. Speak into the microphone, say your name. For or against? We only want to hear your voice because the, yeah, the, the lady who takes the racket, yeah. she has to write it down. It's Timothy, it's Timothy McCann, and I'm in favor. Okay, thank you. We don't have seats that spin around, and we don't vote. <laughs> You're not going to pass on to Hollywood or anything. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Just you. Hi, I'm Christine Thompson, and I'm in favor. Okay. Thank Anyone you. else? Yes, go on. Anna Castillo, I'm in favor. Thank you. All right. Any, okay, any, any anybody objection? against? No? All right. All right, so if we are not, you guys want to add anything before we close the public hearing? I, I think we're good. Yep. All right, mm -hmm. so can, can we have a motion? Make a motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So. I don't have a draft decision to, uh, to sign tonight on this one. Oh, you don't? Go, can we come I'll, sign I'll it tomorrow? Come, well, we could vote. Based Can the on clerk the sign for the board? No. Okay. No. no, you'd have to come in tomorrow. We'll okay. come in tomorrow, but we'll go sign. We'll take the time to go sign. Mm -hmm. Jake, can you get down there and sign? Yeah. Martha? But anyway, you need the 20 days, so we, yeah. if we go tomorrow on Monday, it doesn't matter. So, but I'll make an effort to go tomorrow myself. If we we appreciate the board that. Agrees Thank you. To it. Thank uh, you. So, so now we just got to figure out what we agreed to do. You got to do a finding first. So what do you find? You find it not detrimental you to find, the neighborhood? I, I, I make a motion that it's not detrimental to the neighborhood. And as presented? As presented and should be treated. Well, no, as, as, yeah, as presented, as modified. Right. And we, and the condition is that we do it without the patio now. If Correct. they come up with the with without parking seat, lot, you can. We will park. construct the patio, but not a well, Yeah, you can construct it, but no seat. Yeah. Right. And... Yeah, more so, people can stand on a patio than sit anyway. Right. You have so a point. Also, so, <laughs> <laughs> and that is, uh, I guess, based on the plan Don't do it. Uh, <laughs> revised by Mr. by Lockwood Architects on by March 10, 2020, and based on the plan submitted by uh, GF Engineering on September 19, 2019. So any, you like, you guys would like to add any other conditions other than that? Standard conditions. With standard conditions, of course. Please All do. right, so the mo Jim, Jim's motion, do I have a second on that? I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Aye, oppose, abstain. It carries, so he's gonna, Mr. Buckland's gonna write the, the dra draft the decision. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to start, are you, would you be able to do it tomorrow? Yes. Like what time if they come by and look at it? Uh, I'd say 11 o'clock. Say, come like noon, to at it if you like. Okay. If you have any comment, let them know. I personally would make an effort to go there, sign it tomorrow. If, if they would, that would be great. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have Thank you night. all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good luck. Good luck with your project. Oh, no. Did you have, regarding that, no. or something new? I said we're ready. Oh, you're yeah, ready. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You recognize me now. Yes. <laughs> oh, you need this too. Oh, yeah. That's where the findings. Yeah.
Yeah, it's more for that way. All right. Oh, okay. All right, we go back. Uh, just one second. Come forward, please. You come forward. Just let me write something else. No. No. <laughs> All right, uh, you here for, what do you have, minor modification? Are you here for minor modification? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, uh, yeah. so name and address for the record. Uh, sure, my name is Christopher King with Atlantic Design Engineers, and we are the uh, engineer for construction uh, for the applicant, uh, NG North America. Okay. Uh, are these the plans you submitted tonight, or these previous? So, uh, if you if if you'd like, I could just give you a quick. Yeah, give to us quick, everything. Quick I'll just give you a so quick history. Get refreshed. Um, yes. And so this project was um, originally approved by the board in 2018. Um, at which point in time, GAF was the permitting engineer. Um, the developer at the time was Sunrise Development. Um, since that point in time, NG North America has acquired the rights, basically purchased the property and the permits, if you will. Um, and NG had um, contacted us um, to basically produce building permit drawings based on the approved permit set that you folks had reviewed and approved. Uh, so in uh, January of this year, we created the building permit set uh, using the GAF design, um, basically capturing, you know, the the spirit of the design, the details of the design, created the building permit set which was submitted and we received our building permit. Uh, if you're, one of the conditions within your original decision was that we have a pre-construction meeting with the town selected um, engineer being Mr. Rowley, um, funds put in the 53G account to allow for inspections during construction. Um, and when we met on site with Mr. Rowley, we brought out our building permit plan and he had noticed that it was not, in fact, the GAF plan. So as a matter of procedure, at that point in time, he had recommended that we submit the revised plans that were approved for the building permit dated January 24th to you folks so that you could vote to approve them as part of the special permit so that there's continuity with the permit and the plans moving forward. Um, out on site, we, we were talking about some of the specifics regarding the design itself, um, and there were some comments made in regards to the stormwater system. Um, so again, the pre-construction meeting was our initial mobilization. Um, they did some, once, you know, again, during permitting, there's a level of due diligence, and then once the project starts construction, you do a lot more site-specific testing, which we had done. And based on the depths of the top glacial till layer, um, it was determined that the site would generate an excess of 10,000 cubic yards due to the amount of material we needed to dig out and then replace with a sand and gravel mix in all of the basins. And that would also include some of the subgrade for the road, which will need to get compaction. And it's going to be difficult in the glacial till material. Um, and so, I, I guess twofold. First, you know, back right, to the. Let me, yeah. if I may. Yes. So first of all, for you wanna be the engineer on record. This. So yes. We, you take in GF. You taking over the. the correct. The We're. Sorry. Correct. And the next thing you are asking for to modify the drainage. No, no. So I'm just kind of giving a, an overview of how we yeah. got to this point. Um, so the, let me just back up one step uh, for clarity. The, the January 24th plan set was reviewed, was submitted to you folks and was originally going to be on a previous agenda. Right. Uh, Mr. Rowley had reviewed that set and issued a letter recommending that the board approve them, deeming them consistent with the GAF design. Correct. So that was, you know, that's ultimately our goal. But in addition to that, um, what we've done is, again, we've determined that we have a pretty good excess of material. It equates okay. to, you know, over 700 dump trucks to kind of put it right. into perspective. And so 
the contractor, um, who the gentleman with me tonight is Matt Williams with ISI and um, Interconnection Systems Incorporated. They're doing the actual site work. And they, so they had asked, well, can we put this material anywhere else on site without impacting the design or affecting the, the approvals, essentially? Um, so we had worked together, both Atlantic Design and NG being the operator, and we had taken the January 24th set that Mr. Rowley has already confirmed is in, you know, con you know, consistent with the GAF design, and we've taken the excess cubic yardage, yeah. and we've taken this portion of the site here, mm -hmm. at the top of the hill, yeah. and we're proposing to basically raise that in an effort to balance the site, and so we're not having to haul off so much material. Was it in the back, does it dip down? No, this is all a hill that goes all uphill here. Right. And so we're doing the same thing. The grades in this area yeah. have been adjusted anywhere from a foot to three feet in some areas, but they're, they're relatively isolated. Um, we're basically where, you know, we're still meeting existing grade at the perimeter. We're not expanding the fence. We're not expanding the limit of clearing. We're not expanding the footprint. All we're really doing is taking one area of the site and raising it up um, in, in an effort to, again, balance the earthwork operation. Let me operation. ask you a question. Sure. Starting at the project, what's the elevation at, at the beginning? At the beginning? Yeah. Um, right there, yeah. Right I there. I want to say it's probably down around 60. What I want to try to get to from the, from the beginning to the end, what's, what's the difference in elevation right sure. now as it stands? It's about 40 so, feet. 40? And what are you trying to cut down? So, you know, under the, under the approved plan, if you will, mm -hmm. the grade at the road right here is 77. And we were going up to the top of the hill and we were proposing 112 and a half. So let's call it 113. So um, that's 36 feet right. from the beginning to the end. Under what we're proposing now, we're only raising the top of the road up to a 114. So we're really only raising it by two feet at the back of the hill. Oh. There is this 115 here. Yeah. We're just trying to bury it, but we're coming back down. So we're really limiting raising the grade at the perimeter because that's what allows us to work within the existing or previously approved footprint, um, which was, you know, we felt was important. Um, just reviewing the, the permitting. So history. more or less, you're playing with the grade two feet. Yeah, two two plus or minus. Yeah, so correct. You're taking two feet from here, putting it here. Correct. On one side, right? Yeah. Well, that, sir? On one side, just. On one side. Okay. Yeah. Did this? Are you moving the drainage area where the park tests were done? So so there, so the drainage basins. There are three drainage basins in the area that were ra in the areas that were raised. That were approved, where was approved originally? It, I remember very well the project is yep. very particular with the drainage. Whatever the perk test, we cannot move this drainage without yep, the site plan. Drainage basins did not move. They okay. just raised in elevation by a foot. Um, the bottom of the basin is not moving. The bottom, the, the whatever, like the bottom of the basin. The material I don't care on top and the bottom. The bottom is, is raising a foot of the basin but the basin itself is in the same location. It's the same size, the same shape in, okay. in the area where it's raised. So if you, if you dig in the bottom of the basin, say at 90, at elevation 90, are you going 89, you're telling me? Or are you going to 91? If the bottom it's of a, my- It's a lot of uh, plans that I just right now, but sure. say, say the bottom of your drainage is a nine, uh, proposed a 90. Yep. It originally was Mr. GAF. Yeah, it was so now you propose a 91 or 89? Correct. Yeah, exactly. We're proposing 91. Why are you proposing higher? Because that's we're lifting everything up because that's where we're putting the material. In the basins, though, we're required to remove and provide a two foot of an overdig in the bottom of the basin. So okay. although the basin is raising a foot, we're not <coughs> raising it by depositing that material in the basin because we're still obligated to provide the two feet of the sand and gravel mix that was part of the original design. Okay, my concern is we don't want to like disturb the integrity of the, the drainage design that was approved. Uh, it was a lot of concern about the drainage and 
we we went by Mr. Mr. Broderick, I believe, Bob. Bob Rogers. Bob Rogers. Uh, he's a professional engineer. We agreed to his design and stuff. So I'm very particular myself that we and Mr. Rowley, I believe that time did not agree with that. However, he's responsible. Mr. Broderick's responsible for his plan. So it has to be built exactly what we agreed on. Just to be fair to Mr. Rowley, because we respected his professional decision as well as Mr. Broderick's decision. And Mr. Bro Broderick's or Broderick's? Rogers. 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 Mr. Rogers, uh, responsible for his sig uh, stamp and design. So, personally, if you want to change any of that design, I would like to review this through the engineer. I'm not going to make the decision in this. Yeah. When did that arrive? All right, we're going to hear it from Mr. Rowley himself, yeah, I because I didn't see this. I just seen that. So we didn't. Did you send an email today? No, I didn't. Uh, OK, so that's OK. We can discuss it now. Sure. Uh, let me hear from Veronica what she thinks. She wasn't here at the original plan, but did you get um, the scoop of it? I did, and I guess I'm not <clears throat> too up on solar projects, but is that where you're going to have the panels? They're going to be raised up two feet. The whole thing is where you're going to put the panels. Is, is yes. Yes. Veronica, and if I may, it's not. It's not the matter of where the panels go. They the matter of the drainage and the grade. The panels being approved. The numbers and stuff. Oh, the site changed. plan was approved as presented, correct? Yeah, and it's but they're not moving feet? the panels location and stuff. But they're the panel, changing the grade. L let me. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Just, but the okay. panel elevation is increased by two feet. Is that not correct? If the ground is increased by two feet. Correct. Then, in turn, the panels would would follow the topography. Correct. Correct. Okay. So my question is about, um, you know, your visuals and surrounding, and I, I don't actually know where that location is and what. Sure, I can I can briefly describe it if you, if you like. It's it's on the Cranberry Highway. It's a like a. a can I explain it to her because yeah, she sure. you don't live here, across uh, you know where the Concord Electric. Across from Wallica. Wallica? Yes. Uh, Joe Barboza. You know Joe Barboza? Yes. Uh, going to West Wareham, the first time you go Road. up the hill, oh, all these industrial buildings way up in the back. Great Hill Mobile Home Park, if that helps you. Oh, you know, yes. If you're going from here okay. just before the fire station on the right. Okay. You know the it's metal building fire there. station on the right just before Federal Furnace Road? It's pretty much You'd think I didn't live here, but I... <laughs> You know what Cumberland Farms sure. is? Yes. Behind yeah. Joe Barbosa. Come back from Cumberland Farms. Oh, that fire station there? That fire station there. Yes. In West Wareham? Come back from that, and that's the lot. There's a it's in the back. There. Oh, yes, the yes, yes. Okay. Behind community yes. storage, pretty much. Up All right. There. So. That makes that clear for where that is. So I guess my question is: All of your fencing, all of your requirements that you have to do are also being raised by two feet. Just Correct, on the, your fencing on and everything else? The fencing. the fencing is on the edge, so that's going to remain at the I, grade that it was because we're tying in at the perimeter. Really, again, I wasn't involved in the initial permitting, but my understanding is on the eastern edge down here, adjacent to the uh, mobile home park, is where we were required to provide the full 50 foot and leave the existing vegetation. In addition to that, this project is including additional plantings in the holes. Um, so to, to, to enhance the existing screening and meets the required setbacks. So the screening is my concern um, with raising it two feet um, and your screening is not going to be raised two feet is what you're saying. Well I mean it's they're trees so you know the existing vegetation out there is tall enough so that the two, the, the two feet that we're raising internally is not going to impact any of the adjacent sight lines due to the topography and the existing, between the 50 foot strip that we're leaving and the additional plantings that we're gonna be filling in any holes. Um, you know, screening has, the, the, this adjustment is not gonna impact that. If anything, the adjustment is gonna be improvement from a construction present standpoint, just in that it's gonna significantly reduce the amount of truck traffic um, right at the project frontage. Um, really, that's what this is, you know, again, we did some on-site testing once we were mobilized after the pre-construction meeting and actually did the earthwork 
um, analysis after it was determined where the unsuitable soils were going to be and how much of it was going to need to be removed and replaced. And of, of course, it also comes down to logistics as well, but uh, from an overall standpoint to the surrounding neighborhood and consistent with the findings of the original permit, you know, we would think this modification would be somewhat welcome just in the sense that, again, the amount of material that we're already approved to haul out of here equates to just over 700 dump trucks. And being able to eliminate that, I think, will be a win-win for, for both parties. Um, we're, we're, like I mentioned, this was the, the change, the, the building permit plan and asking the board to accept those as part of the original special permit came up well, we were already essentially mobilizing and doing the pre-construction meeting with Mr. Rowley. Um, so we've already, our limit of work is staked out. Um, we're already doing tree clearing out there and or hoping to move dirt within a couple weeks. Um, and so, you know, we certainly respect the board's um, uh, request to have Mr. Rowley take a look at everything. Um, you know, I'm very familiar with the original design that GAF did. Um, and I think that this is certainly consistent with that design. Um, I'm talking with Mr. Rowley preliminarily before he was able to put his reviewing hat on. I think we could possibly uh, make some tweaks which would improve upon it. Um, but, um, you know, as far as raise, you know, the, the, the request to raise the site in an effort to balance the, the fill you know, doesn't change the design per se. The ponds still have the same amount of volume. They still have the same capacity. They still have that same two feet um, of the entire bottom area with the stone trench wick. Um, and, you know, the, not to mention the fact that these ponds are, you know, based on the previous design, when you take a look at the numbers, appear to be significantly over designed. You know, we're not looking to reduce that. Um, we're just looking really. To, to balance the site and really make construction go a little bit faster and a little bit easier. All right. Again, th th here's the deal. This is, they're asking for minor modification. We're going to listen to Mr. Rowley. We have to decide if it's a minor or major, and he needs three out of, three out of four to decide if it's a minor. So you guys want to add anything before Mr. Rowley? No. Okay, Ms. Charlie, please. Uh, if uh, if uh, uh, Mr. King is comfortable with the amount of research that he did with what was done for the investigation before, um, then basically you're looking at the same plan. Um, I don't see any difference. On the other hand, I stand by the letter that I wrote originally, and I don't think that... Um, if the plan is substantially the same as it was, that it improves the plan specifically or that it satisfies my concerns. If you recall, when they did the infiltration tests that I requested them to do, they did not do those infiltration tests in the most dense soil, which was down four to five feet. They did them up higher. In my opinion, that gave them a false sense of security as to what they had. So be that as it may, the plan was approved, and Atlantic Design has taken the same plan and is working with that same plan. So I would hold them to the same degree of responsibility as I would with GAF, were they the engineers that are looking at this at this point. It's going to be up to them. They have a professional responsibility to, to do their own due diligence and be satisfied that it works. I'm hoping that it does, but I'm not suggesting to you as a board that I'm necessarily any more comfortable today than I was then. That having been said, what they're attempting to do is to say, take soil removal that was not expressed in so many words at the public hearing and now either truck it off site, which, which they would have had to do if they maintained the same special permit, or now what they'd like to do is not have to do that and simply just spread it out on the site. And they've chosen the northwest corner of the site to do it. It is the highest point of land on the property. Now they're raising it a couple of feet. I don't know that the elevation change is substantially different or, in, or really significant to the project. If I had to think about it in terms of um, the soil and what's being taken out, uh, does it have, have the same characteristics as land that was not 
uh, disturbed before because at the top of that soil, when you stump it, you've got a certain amount of loam, then you've got the underlying sand, and then you hit around two to three feet down, you hit that hard glacial till. That's still going to be there. If they're removing glacial till and putting it on top of the mound and grading that out, now you've got the harder material sitting on top. They're still going to be responsible for maintaining that to keep it from eroding. They're going to have to put some uh, uh, jute netting or something down to stabilize it, make sure that it doesn't erode both during the construction process as well as when the process is finished. So that having been said, um, I don't have an awful lot to say about, about the changes. I will say one thing that I noted, and I don't recall that it came up as a matter of the original hearing. There's a note on this plan that says along that 50-foot strip, which separates out their property, their construction from Gray Hill Mobile Home Park, do you remember what we did down off Route 25, uh, Jim, when we looked at the trees and everything above right. 40 feet they took out? That's going to be done here, too. So that there's a number of big trees that could possibly be taken out they need to be determined as to which ones they are. And that was not a part of the original approval, as I recall it. There was some concerns about uh, implementing vegetation along that side where there were some pretty good holes between there and where the people had their mobile home units. Um, I did hear and say that they had the filling the holes, but I well, they're, saying they're, saying. they're saying they're filling the holes in the, where it's open. But I don't recall that under the original special permit, they were removing any trees within that 50-foot buffer. So anything 40 feet and above, according to this plan, they're going to be taken out. So, so correct? Anything over 40 feet? Yeah, and that, that you wasn't... It, you need it for the angle of the sun. That yeah. was a no on the... I would have to look at them, but I believe that note was on the GAF plan, and that was why... The applicant, you know, for every tree that is removed over that height, they're going to come back and plant three within the holes along that's, that edge. That's fine. If it was, I looked quickly and I didn't have to see it, but that's yeah. okay. Um, the only thing I'd suggest on that is what we decided when we were out there on the other site was instead of ripping out stump and all, leave the stump, cut it off at the stump and leave it there so you don't disturb the rest of the ground around it because you'll end up taking out a lot of that's other reasonable. vegetation that's around the too. stump. Yeah, that's reasonable. Act, act, actually, that may cause a problem. These are ground screws. Um, you can't take a ground screw there. They're specifically set in a certain yeah, okay. place. We're talking about the outside buffer zone, right. buffer zone, not oh, in your area. Yeah, about no, it here. No, okay. Outside of the area. Yeah. My apologies. So I, I think that's reasonable. And on top of that, there were, there, we were talking internally because understanding how tree removal is a sensitive issue, we would certainly be willing to flag the trees that we anticipate removing them. And, you know, again, understanding the way the language is written, there's no specific spot where we need to replace it. We would even propose to flag the trees we want to remove, put some stakes where we want to replant. And if the board um, wanted to, we would certainly be amenable to a condition that any trees removed within that 50 foot buffer zone would be stumped or removed in a manner so that we're not creating additional soil disturbance. Uh, Stump would remain. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable request. Sally came up with that before, and it, I, I think it's not only reasonable, I think it's it makes less sense. of a strain on you. Yeah, absolutely. It's just less stabilization you're chasing. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Let me ask you a question. You can't lose that fill all the way down? Well, the, I, so say. Charlie kind of hit on that when you know, he mentioned that we're going to be placing it. And so, you know, we, as the responsible party for the, the construction general permit under the Nipides program, are obligated to make sure that we adhere to certain standards from an erosion and sediment control. And so the thought was, if we limited it to the top of the hill, then we still had this area here where we're maintaining that existing vegetation and with some intermediate controls just on the downside of where we're going to be redispersing that material. It provides almost a, a buffer that we will, we will be the stewards of and keep clean. And that's just another line of protection to prevent it from going down into the existing ponds, ultimately, which, you know, Charlie mentioned on site, he hasn't seen it over top that, but ultimately it does make it down to the Cranberry Highway. So that was our thought of not evenly dispersing it across the whole site because that would be a challenge in and of itself from a stabilization standpoint. And so we really wanted to limit it. It was a balance. It's how high do you want to make it without 
you know, potentially affecting some of the issues you folks brought up, but at the same time being able to quickly achieve stabilization and contain it. And so that's kind of, you know, that's the area that we had, had decided. I got it. I'd like to get some clarification on the purpose. Um, I'm going back to my original question, the purpose of the fencing. And the reason that I really want to know is my experience with other solar sites, the fencing and the, and the plantings for buffer for visual effect were very important to residents. Um, these solar um, farms or whatever you want to call them are allowed to go in residential areas and, and it's abutting a residence, it's abutting a mobile home park. I don't know who showed up for the meeting. I didn't see any of the original plans. When I saw the original plans for another meeting that I was in, they were pictures, there was a lot of talk about what impact that's going to have. And when you raise that up two feet, that's going to have an impact. Um, I don't know what that's going to be. What's the purpose of the fence? Um, that's not to provide some kind of a visual relief, I guess, so to speak. I know it's obviously for safety, but I believe, if I can recall, it was also for a visual effect. And if you're raising everything two feet. Uh I mean, I don't think the, typically if you're dealing with a fence that's installed for a, a visual protection, you're going to see vinyl, vinyl coating or may possibly some slats, and this does not have that. So this fence is strictly from a security safety Is this standpoint. a wire fence, a, a chain, chain link, link fence. fence? Chain link fence, galvanized chain link security, fence. The trees are for visual screening. Exactly, yeah, and in my experience, and I've done a lot of solar projects, is when the abutters come out in force and screening is a concern. That's where you see a row of supplemental plantings, uh, green giant arborvitaes, deer resistant that grow quick, provide instantaneous screening, and that's not on this plan. And so again, you know, you know, we weren't the permitting engineers. I don't, I didn't take the time to go back through the minutes, but you know, I, you know, I would think, I would, I would surmise that if if screening was a huge issue with the abutters that you would see some kind of supplemental screening here um, and, and we don't, um, the fact that we're providing the full 50 foot, which is you know, what we're required to provide and then supplementing that on a three to one ratio as we're taking down selective trees from a screening standpoint, um, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what more we're you know, required to do, if you will. Um, and you know, again, you know, you know, my opinion is certainly, you know, my opinion, as you said, they're candy bars. Everyone has one, but you know, I would just hearken to Mr. Rowley's comment that you know, the the adjustment in the grade isn't significant in the scope of things, and certainly not from a visual perspective, especially considering the size of the mature trees that were in the width that we're leaving on that on the closest affected edge. And uh, and so, what's the growing rate of the current trees that you're? proposing to put there how how long does it take to get two feet higher i don't i believe that i don't think the species have been specifically selected um you know again the the it was written somewhat vague and so you know again that was an item that internally we were talking about let's get this coordinated so that when we cut down some trees and spend all this money and plant them and go to get mr rowley's sign off that we're all on the same page that we're doing what the original decision intended us to do. And so if it's something where, you know, species will be, you know, the final planting layout or stakes be set in the field and species, you know, submitted for review and approval to the board and or its designee so that we're providing instead of, you know, a, a Japanese maple or something like that, so it's gonna drop its leaves in the winter, we're providing something that coniferous, something year round screening. We would, I, you know, again, I think that's a reasonable request. The two foot difference in elevation, Veronica, won't make any difference to the people at mobile, Great Hill Mobile Home Park and what they see. Because a 50 foot screen uh, at this time of year is virtually no screen at all. I don't care where you go. 50 feet means nothing. What they're going to see out there back windows is solar panels. And the fact that the far end of it is a couple of feet higher is probably not going to be discernible. On the other side of the system. It's is, not the entire thing, Charlie? 
Pardon me? It's not the entire grade that's two, no. two feet higher? No, oh, not the whole thing. Mostly in that okay. upper corner, upper right-hand corner. Right. Oh, okay, gray, I misunderstood. The hill is all on the bottom of the plan. Okay, okay. Strip is along the bottom of the plan? Yes. They're on the bottom side of that strip. So what they're going to see is the panels that are closest to them, and they won't even be any noticing any two-foot difference on the far end of this. Okay. And, and there is no uh, residential use on the northwest side of this at all. That's the Wareham Fire District property in back there. The, the only thing that's there is a water tank. This is the Great Hill. All right, I, I guess the concern of the board, I personally, if, if you are buying an industrial or commercial, I would say build it to the property line. I, it doesn't phase me. But we do have to respect somehow the, resi the residential neighborhood. Sure. To a certain, as much as we can. My opinion, like I said, we're not engineers here. We will go with, with Mr. Rowley's recommendation, and you have to work with them, my personal opinion. So as long as you guys can sort it out on the issue, uh, I'm okay with it. The question to be asked tonight before we go any further, do you guys believe it's a minor modification we, before we discuss more and everything? So, I mean, there's no sense if we if it's major modification that needs a public hearing. Do you, do you believe it's a minor modification? Minor. Minor? <coughs> minor. Veronica, minor? I would say minor. I agree, it's minor. So let's proceed with minor. Let's, so we're still on the subject. Are you willing to work, Mr. Rowley, to sort this stuff out? It's not gonna hold up your project. You come back on the 25th, you guys work out the details now? I mean, uh, next well, couple of weeks or whatever. Mr. Rowley's recommendation was that the board accept the Atlantic design so they become the plan of record. That, we're okay with that, of okay. course. Well, just know that my letter was written on the 28th after the submission of the January 24th plan. The plan you have tonight is March 5th. Oh. So it's a different plan. Okay. The only difference is the change in the grading that came after I wrote the letter. Okay. Again, I, I would still say it's in substantial compliance with the plan, and no matter whether the grade changes two feet or not, they're still responsible for erosion control, both during and after construction. That's the most important thing, and the fact that this drainage system that they have adopted as their own is gonna function. It's strictly on well, them that it happens. You question whether it's gonna work or not, and- I did, I, I, have I, a, I have a long history on that site of knowing what it looked like and you know, 50 years ago. And you feet is gonna put more, <laughs> way more impact on that drainage, and I t as I understood last time, like we agreed to, to put that stamp on it, and they believe it handle it, so you'll be responsible for that if it, the drainage does not take it. Sure, absolutely, and we've looked at all the preliminary testing, done okay. some of our own, and, and for whatever it's worth, we've, we've raised the site almost two feet in some areas, but we really limited it in the pond areas and only raised those a foot, understanding that we wanted to keep those as consistent with the original design as possible. Okay. Um, and we're certainly willing to work with Mr. Rowley. I mean, the, you know, we want to be transparent and, and work right. with him. So, so is the, the board in this matter, I don't think we're holding them up. Holding them up. They work in every day. I, I don't. I go to Concord Electric all the time. Would you? You have a 53, 53G account, right? You, I don't know they, how much is in it right now. Right, but you have to feed it if you need to. Well, it's been nothing taken out for inspection yet. Right. So, so there's, uh, there's uh, in there for inspection anyway. Does it make yeah. sense that Mr. Rowley reviewed the plans and come back on the 25th, and we have more, or it doesn't uh, matter to you? I don't think there's any need for any further review um, I'm okay with because this. I'm, I'm going to stick to my original letter, which I, I wrote, and I don't see this as a change that substantially changes that. Okay so I'm, I'm not concerned about it being a major or minor modification, just that the latest plans be reflected in the modification of the special permit, that the permit gets put on record because at some point your board or the building inspector or somebody is going to ask me for an inspection of the site and a final sign-off. Right. And as I explained on that site visit, if we didn't do this, what plan am I supposed to refer to when I do the final inspection? Right. That's why I ask that they come here and at least get their set of plans as being the plans of record so it becomes a part of the public record and something that I can refer to later on. All right. Uh, while we're here, anyone here in the audience against or in favor of this project? I'd like some information. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
menus, select my menus. Um, Jim Menace, 2526 Cranberry. How many yards of material are you going to pull off the uh, site? That's what we're discussing I'm sorry, now. What? How many yards of material are you going to take off the site? Uh, it's somewhere between 10 and 13,000 cubic yards. Off the site. Is what would we is the un, the material that we would not be able to use in the basins due to the overdig or underneath the road? So Correct. ten to thirteen thousand. Correct. Cubic yards. Correct. Okay. That's not going off the site, though, Jim. Well, that's what we're proposing. Well, that's what I'm asking. What's you guys what's don't coming mind, off can you the site? Direct the answer to us just for the yeah, record. absolutely. So thank you. If you don't mind, you, you can. Um, with yeah. all due no, that's respect, all right. No, that's that's memories. fine. Just, yep. just uh, you could answer through you through, the through you, you then. Could answer us. All right, okay. so, so um, through the chair, um, originally, if we weren't requesting this minor modification, we would have been required to remove from the site 10 to 13,000 cubic yards. The, one of the main reasons for this request for the minor modification is so that we no longer need to do that. If we're going to, the material we're going to excavate out from the pond and beneath the road to get our sub base is going to be redispersed in the northwest corner of the site. And so the ultimate goal is that we would not have to truck off anything in a perfect world, and we would just be importing the sand and gravel mix that we would need within the basin areas themselves. Select them, please. So it's answer? zero then, right? Zero. Excuse me, select. Right? Correct. That, that, that's what I want to know, yes. how much you were going to take off. So if it's zero, zero, zero. pretty much, yeah. And um, through you again. Um, When, when they send out the notifications to the abutters, it goes to Landowner. the owner of the property, not uh, the residents that live there. No. So one person or, or how many own the property would receive that, not the 150 residents. Mm -hmm. We don't make the rules. No, no, I'm just saying so. I understand. Um, they might not get noticed. Right. Keep in mind, these people are tenants. They come and go. Oh, I, I, I understand that. And a lot of them live there for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. So I understand. oftentimes you won't get the same turnout mm -hmm. from the people because there's lack of notification. So I think it's incumbent upon the board to look out for whether they're tenants and or home or, uh, landowners. I, I That's think all. these are state rules. Not even town. No, just, I know. think we I, did. I, we did have some uh, tenants come that did live there. I think at the original. Yeah, but yeah, select Mimini is talking about the the, the procedures. No, no, Should no. We, I understand. Uh, I notify him or not. Correct, select Mimini. No, I no, just. I, he's, make, I think. Make, go ahead. If I may, go ahead. I, I think he's emphasizing that this board has to be the voice for the people who don't turn out to the meetings that make determinations on these types of builds. And I think we need to be cognizant of that. And that was one of the reasons why I am concerned with the rise of the elevation um, and concerned with, I, I wasn't a part of the original approval or I don't, whatever was done with the planning board, um, but I've sat in a couple of the panel discussions when it was be presented before the board. And unless your abutters basically fight tooth and nail. They're not, it's, it, unfortunately, it doesn't usually get we built in an off, aesthetic way. Excuse me, we can't yeah. go off the subject. Let's stick with this matter. I, we could dis, right. if, if, if okay. I Okay, so anyway. Discuss this matter, and with, with the, after this, we can't mix, now but, we're but going this way is, off this, the subject. It's, uh, it's, Let's specifically speak okay. on this project. Okay, pardon if I may say, that is the Mr. subject Manis, with no the raise and elevation. We, want us, we could discuss this matter you want to oh, okay. after this. Uh, we just we don't want to go off the subject mr. I mean, chairman if I may yeah go ahead I'm not requiring a whole lot of time here but I no, do have opinion ahead. on this pro on this project and he is coming to ask for a modification where my opinion matters yes of course I am giving my opinion please give me the floor when I'm doing that of course you can but the, on this project not on some it is on the, well I have obviously we all draw on our experience of previous projects to make determinations which is why I mention it okay so my final words to you would be, I hope that you will take the residents into consideration, your abutters, because visually nobody wants to live beside a solar project 
raising it somewhat gives us gives me a chance because you you're here for a minor modification to make that emphasis to you because I wasn't a part of the original one so that would be my emphasis on whatever you're putting in for screening do your best job that you can for the residents who have to live beside there that's my point I totally agree I mean, you know totally agree with this so uh, so that being said I guess uh, you guys want to add anything uh, no, I mean, I don't disagree with anything that has All been right, said. So the matter before us, we have to vote to agree uh, that the Atlantic Design Engineering are the engineer on records and the minor modification. And we, we have to somehow in the decision draft that they live up to the, the design standard that <clears throat> Mr. Rowley talked about. You want to do a... Uh... Well, I think all conditions of the original permit language is sufficient. Does that make sense, Mr. Rowley? All conditions of the original permit. Well, oh sure, you don't want to um, alter that in any way. What you're saying is by this is that the plan that's been proposed is n not a substantial change from the original plan. I'm just trying to find the date on it. Um. Uh, March 5th, I believe. Uh, uh, January 24th, on date on the plan. That's the bill. Yeah, that's the bill. That was what was submitted for the building permit. The plan that is. Did you revise those plans? The January 24th plans, yes. So these are your final right plans, right? You want to plan? Uh, Those. Should be March it's 5th. The plan you want to be on record? No, it's March 5th. Okay. These are the ones they were delivered to the office. Yes, okay. March 5th. So there's no revision on here. There's no revision page. Correct. That was the plan that was originally submitted with the building permit. All right. So with the, so we need to put on the on the on the amendment or whatever the the minor modification on the revision dated March 5th. Correct. All right. Uh, so do we need a motion to do this? Or? Yeah. So I'll do we need a set of the plans to, as well. Pardon me? I'll need a set of the plans for the permit right. file as well. So do we need to close the hearing first? There's no hearing. Why There's no care? hearing. So I'd like to make a motion that the board adopt the plans dated March 5th, 2020 by Atlantic Design, and they become the plan of record for the project. Um, the special permit be modified to reflect the new plan and all other conditions of the original plan uh, become upheld. Upheld. Does anyone upheld. else want to add anything on that motion? I'll, I'll, comes... check, I'll check with town council as to what should be filed. Okay, good idea. If Charlie, you could, would you like? If you could just make reference in, in uh, light of Jim's motion that uh, a presentation was made that would change the grade in uh, certain areas by not more than two feet. On the upper left corner. Upper and that they, they will be supplanting trees removed against the buffer on Great Hill with additional planting. Uh, at least those two things are a little bit different. Right. So if you just mention that, at least it gives somebody an idea as to what the difference was. Sonia, if you don't mind adding Charlie's comment to the draft. All right, uh, what else you guys would like to add? Okay. And then an updated plan set will be delivered to the office. Okay. Before the permit is issued. Okay. I had multiple copies. They were dropped with um, I'll check Sonia. And see, uh, with Sonia. Okay. If they're not, these, make sure they're dropped. Yeah. You gave me this set and said this was the latest. Okay. I, uh, it was the same day I had them delivered to Charlie. Yeah, no I problem. Delivered one set to Charlie. You just make sure they're there. We're not going yep, to give Absolutely. It. All right. So that that motion done by Jim. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Good luck with your Thank project. You. Thank you. All right. On the other businesses and discussion, if we may, Mr. Meniz, can you, do you mind? What's that? We, uh, can we ask you a few questions? We could discuss the other matter now, if you want. Yeah, sure. I didn't mean to cut you short, but we'd like to oh. stick on the subject so we don't go off. 
So I, just before we go forward, I, I, I do agree totally. I understand what Veronica about, and the board would like to, we don't, people get excited. I do understand, but we'd like to stick on the subject and we appreciate her comments and everything. So going back to your subject, I totally understand. However, like I said, it's the state rules not even town rules oh. that you notify the landowner, so. Right, as, as long as you're cognizant of that as a board, and you take that into consideration, because they, there's, there's a good chance, I've seen this uh, a number of times, and I've, you, I, okay. Good. And, and I saw how many people showed up, and for the number of people who are gonna butt a solar field, that would reflect to me that they weren't notified directly, as we know they were. Well, um, an assumption on my part, I don't know that because I've seen other installations where people are very vocal because of the visual I, impact. I the have, visual impact. I, I was fortunate, unfortunate, I had the opportunity to chat with a couple of people on Timber Lane, which is Great Hills, way, the, the, the closest to Butters, and the two or three that I spoke to was so relieved to find out that it wasn't going to be an industrial building or a commercial well, building. That, that's great. And, they, and you know, so they, so there has yeah. been some scuttlebutt. So that's not like they're going to wake up right. some they, morning and be surprised. Oh my, they're building. They, they do know, but they probably, like you say, they probably haven't been notified when they have the opportunity to come here. Right. And, and, and we look at Oklahoma. minimums. We look at minimums, and I think, as, as Charlie indicated, not to put words in your mouth, that. In the winter, 50 feet basically is nothing. Uh, if you don't have, you know, decidu I mean, if you don't have evergreens and you have the leaves falling off the trees. So, you know, it's what, it's what the laws, uh, bylaws state, so that's what we have to go by. But um, so also, you, you're also, talking you know, about and, procedure and also, matters you, and procedures. You talk, you're discussing. Oh, well, the about procedure in, in, I, in. Are you speaking in, specifically on this project or in, in, in general in procedure? General. In general, I understand. But like again, right. but we don't make. So, uh, I do have a, a question because, um, so the state laws, as I understand them, are pretty. They they do give towns the ability to place more requirements on the solar panel facilities, and I just and I I actually one of the things I have on my folder is for bylaw changes regarding solar panels that we need that needs to become a discussion so that we can create some additional requirements um, based on what we want to see that's correct with the solar panels and we can use um, other towns bylaws that other uh, that they're implementing as you know maybe you could do this you could come up with an idea or uh, change the law, put it in writing. We'll discuss it here. Uh, can we put it in writing, to present it to the planning board? They're the one who could put it on the warrant. We can put it on the warrant. Right. And it takes its course, and hopefully we'll see in next town meeting, you could start this procedure by, like, as we go, you know how we change the bylaws? Yes. We recommend we don't change yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The we setback and stuff. And, and like I said, last time we did a few things. Ken brought them to the planning board. The planning board decided on some, went against some, and they're the one who puts it on the warrant. And if it goes, you could suggest 200 feet buffer for uh, for solar panel. If the town accepts it, the planning board go for it, and it goes before the body, it's 200 feet. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. You have to come up with the, with the, the bring it, and we discuss it here, and we could present it. You could present anything, I guess. One thing that's been kind of overlooked, I guess, is, is what you're talking about. So, Mike's off, Jay. I think 50 feet is good, but if you, that's my opinion, but you guys want to change it to 500 feet, that's 500 feet if, if it passes. To, if you're trying to go south to get into warmer weather in the winter, 50 feet is nothing. Right. But anyway, procedure matter. We, we don't, like I no, said, no, again, in, in, it is what I it, no, I mean, no you understand. And why I question the uh, materials being removed uh, anything over X amount of yards triggers a, a requirement for material removal permit. Right. And um, that's, what, that's why I inquired about that. And I think, the, I think the town gets a whopping quarter a yard or something. Am I correct, Mr. Buckland? Sound you? like that. Yeah. So. Earth removal permit? Yeah, and in, in I believe, that, does that come through the selectmen? 
I who think grants so. that? It's a permit. So, and I never see anybody come for that. So, you know, seven, you know, ten thousand to thirteen thousand yards. I mean, a lot I mean, of quarters. Take a few hundred bucks and put it in the. Every <laughs> guys can move dirt around pretty freely. Well, but it's, it's, when they start doing um, gravel pitting and and uh, you know solar have, rays, then then it's another whole. Pardon me. Uh, solar arrays. If they sell it. Uh, Photovoltaic volta arrays. Yeah. If they're selling the. Uh, if they're selling the material, that becomes a mining operation, and that's different. If they're moving, if Cranberry guy's moving dirt, moving material because it's part of his farming, he's he's it's good. Acceptable. It's acceptable. It's acceptable. It's it's if it, they if they're doing it under the guise of farming and somebody's what and saying, hey, wait a minute, you know that's a million yards you've moved over to Randolph uh, from Wareham. <laughs> that's not farming. <laughs> hey, thank that's, you, and uh, I'm I'm gonna. No comment on that. <laughs> there's, there's probably a, a lot of other things that could be considered with respect to your solar panels too. Only state, the state says you have to allow it and you cannot set up unreasonable regulations is what it essentially I'm, I'm says. I'm hypothetically speaking. I mean, yeah. you could present anything if it's acceptable by, remember everything approved by town warrant has to go to Attorney General, he might yeah. say it's no good and it dies. But there are a lot of other things, like yeah. um, we discussed one particular one with the planning board. Where it, it was a, a, a vertical uh, visualization that impacted neighbors. Whereas changes in elevation can do that. Uh, yeah. some, some places, like there was one particular project that we did over off of uh, County Road, which your board approved. It was in a sand pit. And it was essentially below grade. You go by there today, and you can hardly see it. There's a few transformers out on their access road, and that's all. Uh, in that particular case, the abutting owners are right up against it. But again, they preferred that to a residential development in their backyard. Right. Nevertheless, that whole project is depressed, and you don't see it. Whereas there are other places, like you can go to Toby Road, and it's right in your face. Um, so the there are a lot of things. What was that one off Hathaway? Yeah, Hathaway. It's off of a little so small cul-de-sac. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the first ones. But um, there are things like, you know, uh, requiring in a, in a case where you're up against a residential area, like you're talking about, Veronica, where it could be that the visual screening needs to be increased. So it gives a better buffer. Or if you can't get the, the density with depth, you require that it be supplemented by other kinds of uh, plantings in order to maintain that depth when this time of year when the leaves go. But there are other things too that you can uh, suggest as a part of the whole bylaw uh, that we don't see. Uh, just having a minimum isn't necessarily the, the uh, answer to everything. In a lot of places the minimum works, other places it doesn't. Uh, one that we did, Jim remembers the one I was talking about on Route 25. Fortunately, one. fortunately, the slope there off of Route 25 and the trees that are left on the slope are enough of a buffer that um, on my way down toward Buzzards Bay when I go that way a lot, I always look over there. See if you, yeah. you can see the very beginning of it and that's it. The rest of it is you behind that bank. you got to know where to look too. you got to know where to look, but if you're not looking for it, you don't see a thing. Whereas if you go in the back of it and go into the site, you say, oh my gosh, look at all the panels. There's what, 30,000 panels in there in three different big sites? One. It's a big one. So it all depends on the location and whose side of it is to what you should implement to, I think you're right, protecting the neighbors is an important thing. Uh, they're not the most uh, sightly things to have yeah, next well, to you. We can't have the, app, uh, <laughs> the pie and eat it too. So. You know, it's, it's interesting, recently I had um, I've been involved with a couple of properties that are yeah. exploring solar. Is that your content? The comment, or something? there was a negative comment made about 70% of our energy being produced by coal. It didn't seem right to me, so I did some research. And 60 some percent of our energy comes from fossil fuels, all fossil fuels, including natural gas. And of that, 23% still comes from coal. Mm. But what was um, real interesting to me is the amount of our national energy produced by renewables is still only 1%. Mm. 
And I think it's going to be for a long time. One percent. So, so that means that there's a lot more. So there will be a lot more solar panel projects before us, and we need to take action right. so that we're not a day late and a dollar short, which we have been on whatever else has already right. gone through. But moving forward, it'd be nice to have some. My, yeah, I agree with you. My personal opinion is that the cost of solar panels and the technology are going to advance exponentially, and that it's going to um, new home construction. It's going to be um, almost frivolous not to build a, a solar roof mm -hmm. on your house. And um, I'd say within 15 or 20 years, fossil fuel. BP already knows it. They, they know oil is dead. It's done. No, it's not dead. It's dead. You can't run your run your car on nothing. What's uh, gonna What's gonna lubricate the wheel bearings? Hmm? I'll tell you what. It ain't gonna be eighty dollars a barrel. To it's thirty four. It isn't. It's thirty something now. Thirty four dollars. Thirty four. The twentieth, the lowest in thirty years. It was, it was thirty the yes, the, uh, it's yesterday. Yesterday, a month longer. Longer. Uh, it's, I know. It's not gonna go away right away. It's, it's not gonna, because it's not of gonna go away completely. No. We there still need to make more plastic. The ocean has got no, lots more room in it. My opinion: there's room for all kinds of energy sources, not just one or two. In in yeah. nineteen um, sixty seven, there was a movie called The Graduate, and the guy said, "Plastics." You know, where are we now with mm -hmm. plastics? That was, that was Dustin Hoffman, 1967. Yeah. We were predicting plastics were the future. I guess we all use plastic and fuel and right now everything. There's more plastic so. in the ocean than there are fish. Yeah. Pardon all right. Me. Anyway, uh, uh, we want to, we have a Mr. Sample here tonight would like to meet. Mr. Sample, want to come forward? Is this Mr. Richard Sample. He's applying to be in the zoning okay, board. Okay, two that are applying. I, I, did, uh, I did read his application. Not that we make a decision, but I guess the zoning board did ask us. I'm Richard Semple, 194 Hathaway Street. All right, just uh, briefly let us know what you do and why you want to be in the zoning board so we could send a recommendation. Uh, what I am is a, a, a carpenter. I'm a subcontractor, so I get work from the big companies and things like that and I stay pretty busy and uh, the reason to come onto the board would be to uh, help the town and I'm getting older and I figured it's something that I should do is being yeah. uh, involved with the town and see if I can help out and you're willing to come every other Wednesday of course if there's an emergency or yep. things no, you can absolutely because we desperately need some some uh, members, and thank you for doing that. Uh, somebody would like to ask Mr. Sample something? I know that Rick has lived in Wareham all your life, Rick. Yep. Have you? Yeah. You know, Rick, so. so that's a good thing. Jimmy? We chatted a little bit before the meeting. <laughs> I'm all set. So um, should we throw him to the curb or say yes? <laughs> I think we should say yes. We need more members so I can I'm take a break. On once no, right no breaks. Oh. No breaks. We're still five. No breaks. Yeah, I know. I call him every week. You better show up, all of you. You better show up, <laughs> except Jim. So, all right. Yeah, we, we're glad. I mean, uh, we're just going to send uh, uh, just like a couple of words to the selectmen so they could move forward next, tu well, next Tuesday, Mr. Manis. Okay. And hopefully you come aboard and thank you <laughs> so they, you help us a lot do i go do i go to the meeting on tuesday night or you do should I just wait do I no no wait? you should go because then the selectmen might want to ask you a few questions because they they're the one who uh, uh, appoint you and not us mm -hmm. that our words mean nothing but it helps you know i'll be at the meeting then. right and then after you get appointed you gotta go to the clerks and get sworn in because you can't sit with us if you don't get sworn in and she'll give you you have to do some, uh, like, a study, a quick uh, studying on the ethics, and you have to sign some stuff. She'll she'll walk you through it. Okay. All right. Uh, so thank you. I, thank I do you. have one question for yeah. the applicant. Any thoughts on tonight's meeting? I was with you. I I, I completely think that we should have some kind of a <laughs> deeper a screen or an evergreen screen, fencing That's whatever. Because I mean, they do. They're going to be just putting them in everywhere. Not to say that, you know, the value of trailer parks compared to a residential house is, is you know, a value. But I do believe that they should try to condense them and keep them unseen 
all the way through until they're done with them. But I am with you on, I think, the 50-foot buffer zone. I wouldn't go any more than that, but I would like to see it denser if they could, you know, work on it. Okay, thanks. We all with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Would, uh, uh, I guess you guys all recommend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would greatly. We don't know if you're any good. To, for Thank you. You've been sitting on the board for three months. <laughs> all right. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Sample. Thank you. Thank you. Anything you guys would like to add for tonight, except uh, make a motion to adjourn. Comment. Second that. Motion to adjourn, second by Jake. <laughs> all in favor, say aye. Wait, Jake, get back in the door. <laughs> yes. All in favor to adjourn? Aye. 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 Of course. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. It's tired.